A man accused of shooting two poverty-stricken women and dumping their bodies in a pigsty claims he's been tortured. The two-pot retirement frenzy is exposing dodgy companies who haven't been paying in. And saying goodbye to James Earl Jones, the man behind the incredible voice of Darth Vader and the Lion King's Mufasa. Hello, I'm Jane Dutton. This is Eyewitness News. A number of consumers looking to cash out their pension savings under the two-pot retirement system won't be able to do so. That's due to dodgy companies failing to adhere to pension fund regulations and by not handing over pension contributions from employees to pension funds. If you don't receive, for example, your benefit statement, your annual benefit statement, you've got to know that there must be something wrong with the way that your funds are being administered. She says the watchdog is already inundated with complaints about non-compliance. And Retirement Fund Administrator Alexander Forbes says it has seen an outflow of more than one billion rand since the two-pot system kicked in over a week ago. This means it's processed more than 78 thousand withdrawal requests from its members. The second accused in the Limpopo pigsty murders case claims he was tortured by police after his arrest. The case centers on the murders of Maria Makato and Kudza Ndlovu. They were shot and killed and their remains found in a pigsty in a farm in Sebayeng just outside Mangkwen. The suspect's farm owner, Zakaria Ulufir, and two of his employees, Adrian De Vett and William Masura, made their third appearance in the dock today. De Vett, who's been identified as the farm supervisor, now has a new lawyer, Mohamed Farouk Valji. Valji told the court that during their consultations, his client claimed he was assaulted and tortured by the police shortly after his arrest, and that the officer responsible was in court. Bail hearing has now been pushed back to early next month. The National Prosecuting Authority says the Department of Justice has created stumbling blocks in accessing the State Capture Commission's database. National Director of Public Prosecutions, Shamila Batoy, told MPs today that they've been requesting full, quote, unhindered access to the Commission's database for about four years as they try to prosecute state capture-related cases. Batoy and the department, headed by Minister Tembi Similani, appeared before Parliament's Justice Committee to discuss the impasse between the NPA and the department on the database. That in order to fulfil its constitutional mandate and, and in, in order to meet the expectations of the public, the ID requires what we call unhindered access to the archives of the State Capture Commission. But Professor Itumeleng Mosala from the Commission says no one is being stopped. And no authority on my part and my team. We don't have the authority to hinder access <coughs> to any of the information. Police have wrongfully arrested more than 4,000 people during the last financial year. That's an average of 11 per day. These wrongful arrests have led to the state being sued for more than 2.2 billion rand. Eastern Cape Premier Oscar Mabuyani has opened a case against Abatembo King Buyolekaya Dalindiebo for extortion allegations leveled against him. Dalindiebo has publicly accused Mabuyani of benefiting from extortion deals in the province. Mabuyani has denied the allegations. Extortion-related incidents are on the rise in the Eastern Cape and more police have been deployed in the province to deal with the scourge. For someone just to do that, we take it as a diversion. It's an attempt to distract us, not to focus on the real issues. But uh, we don't also want to take our eyes off uh, the issues uh, that are happening there. That's why I want police to investigate. So MEC has opened the case already. I'm doing an, an, an statement, an affidavit, uh, to actually uh, get involved in the case myself because my name has been there and I'm a premier. Transnet says it's struggling to make enough money to cover its debt and to improve its operational performance. The Rail Freight and Port Agency is spending 1 billion rand a month to service its debt. Transport Minister Barbara Creasy and Group CEO Michelle Phillips have today been before Parliament's Standing Committee on Public Accounts to discuss the company's finances. That's following a more than 7 billion rand loss in the past financial year. They say a multi-billion rand restoration of the rail network is needed to get freight volumes back to peak levels reached in 2018.
You can't have a situation where one, you are, uh, you have a performance issue, you're failing to maintain your network, you're not getting equipment in at right rates, but you have a debt burden that you have to consistently be redeeming. A wrap of some international news as violence escalates in the occupied West Bank. Israel has struck inside a humanitarian area in the southern Gaza Strip. Israeli missiles set ablaze a tented camp for displaced Palestinians. At least 48 people have been killed. The EU's top court delivered two major victories in the bloc's battle against tech giants. It ruled that the iPhone maker must pay 14.3 billion US dollars in back taxes to Ireland. Today is a big win for European citizens and for tax justice. The Court of Justice confirmed the decision from 2016 by the European Commission. Ireland granted Apple unlawful uh, aid, which Ireland now has to recover. And this judgment is final. The Court also confirms the Commission decision in the Google Shopping antitrust case, and also this is a final judgment. And veteran actor James Earl Jones is being remembered as one of the world's finest actors whose contribution to the arts cannot be measured. The 93-year-old, whose career spanned six decades, passed away on Monday in the US. Several of his co-stars on various productions have taken to social media to mourn his passing. Jones's film roles included Darth Vader in Star Wars and the voice Mufasa in the 1994 Disney classic The Lion King. And that's it from us. Don't forget to download the EWN app. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune, and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.